To be honest, the conditions look really, really good, but someone needs to tell the carp that because they're not really playing ball. It's unusual for me to fish three different spots, but I just feel like I've got so many options in this swim. The wind has been absolutely pumping in here and that seems to have brought a few fish in. <laughs> well, after a really slow start to the trip, I didn't see today coming. That left-hand spot is starting to rock now with that wind pushing in there. Christ, I've had a right old mixed bag. I've had linears, I've had really dark mirrors, I've had scattered linears, scaly ones, perfect commons. I've had one with a big hump and I've even had two fish at once on the mat. The only thing I think I'm missing is a proper big in, so fingers crossed for tonight and uh, the next 24 hours. Well, here we are in one of my favourite places in the world, Bluebell Lakes. And uh, I fished quite a lot on Swan and Kingfisher more than any other lakes, but today I'm on Mallard Lake for a change. Um, it's, it's the biggest lake on the complex. It's got boatloads of fish, possibly 1,500, whether it's that many or not, I don't know, but a lot of fish in here. And they go to upper 40s as well, so there's a real chance of a big in. Um, I got down last night, uh, Saturday night after work, so I got down about half past six and as you can imagine it was pretty busy so there weren't many options on swims so I set up in a swim um, further up to the right of where we're fishing now and I'd done the night. I actually had a bite but unfortunately it fell off at the net this morning so that was a little bit of a gutter but still it was a bite and uh, I saw a lot of fish showing around to my left through the evening yesterday and this morning so when the lake started to uh, quieten down and a lot of people packed up on Sunday morning, I've moved up to this swim. And there's quite a lot of fish showing out in front of me at the moment, not very far out either. It's a funny area of the lake really. I've not fished this area of the lake before and it's really shallow in close, like only a foot or two for quite a long way out. And then it seems to get out to about maybe 30 yards and then it drops down all the way to 18 foot. So you've got deep water, a bit further out, maybe 50, 60 yards out, 18 foot. And then you've got like three or four foot in a bit closer. And where the fish are showing is right on the edge of where it's just dropped down to 18 foot. Now, 18 foot's quite deep to be fishing this time of year. And I've had a good plumb around to try and find something a bit shallower. And just further around to the left of the swim, I found an area that's eight foot. So. It's deeper out in front and further left you go it comes up to eight foot and I've managed to find a nice clear spot surrounded by weed and it's only sort of well I'm wading out a little bit to cast but it's eight wraps out so it's not very far out there's a few fish showing and I've put a bit of bait in on that and uh, got a couple of rods on that and also just round the corner you have to wade out just round this corner and there's a lovely reed be reedy sort of margin bay and I've seen a couple of fish show round the corner so I've got one rod round there. It's only a rod length off of the reeds. It looks like it could be a really nice spot. It's actually got a good bit of depth on it as well. It's seven foot deep and is a lovely clear sort of shelf before it drops off into the deeper water. So I've got the three rods out. I've got some bait on each spot and uh, there's a few fish about. So fingers crossed, we might just be getting a bite. I didn't manage to get a bite yesterday afternoon. To be honest, I would have liked to got in this swim a bit earlier. I didn't get in there till gone midday. And there was quite a lot of fish showing in front of it when I set up. And I, I, I tucked that one round the corner and I found a spot to the left-hand side of the swim um, that was in eight foot of water that I really fancied that for a bite. And although there was the odd fish showing in front of that, sort of near that spot, there was a lot more fish showing through the afternoon to the right of the swim where I didn't have a rod. Um, I still felt like I was going to get a bite, but it, the, the afternoon sort of fizzled out. Quite a few fish were showing in front of me, but as the evening drew on, the fish just moved further and further out and they just disappeared out to the middle. And then in the evening, they were showing over the other side of the lake in sort of 
the chance fizzled out really, but because there was quite a lot showing to the right of the swim, uh, it's a lot deeper there, it's 18 foot deep. It's quite shallow for a bit and then it just drops straight down about 30 yards out down to this 18 foot, but it's just nice and clear once you get into that deep water. I decided to sort of pop a marker float out over there and I put one rod, I take, took one rod off the eight foot spot and just put it round to the right on that sort of 18 foot deep. So I scattered quite a bit of boily out with a catapult, mixed it up a bit. I put some 10 mil live system, some 18 mil live system and some pro stim liver 15 millers and just scattered it all around that sort of area and put just a 15 mil pop up over the top of it and uh, just hoped that the fish would return at some point either in the night or in the morning but um, yeah very quiet night and uh, morning is upon us now and the fish are still showing out in the middle and slightly more over the other side but yesterday they didn't sort of really turn up till later in the morning so fingers crossed they'll get closer and closer to us and um, hopefully there'll be a late morning bite. Finally got a fish on. Doesn't it look good down in this corner though? The wind's absolutely hacking in there. Picked up in the last couple of hours. And the left hander just down in this corner along this reed line. It's pulled up tight and we've got a fish on. Come on, son. He's in the net. Go on. Just about. Oh, it's a nice scaly one. Yeah, she'll do. That's a nice start. scales are like merged into his body like almost like they're camouflaged it's beautiful isn't it what a way to get off the mark this is an absolute beautiful fish christ real chocolatey color it's almost as if the scales are melted into his body really really dark really dark chocolate fish yeah pleased with this one it's a uh, taking me a little while to get a bite but we've got one down the left hander down the margin and uh, the wind's absolutely pumping in there now so fingers crossed there might be another bite on the cards but this is a beauty back she goes Well, just like the buses. So I've just slipped uh, my first fish back. Took me a fair while to get that bite. And uh, the rods, or one of the other rods on the boily spot is just gone probably 20 minutes later. So we're hooked up to our second fish. It looks like a nice common. Let's go get you. She's in the back of the net. There we go. 
It is blowing a hooli, and we've got one, nice common. Let's have a look, what have we got? See how orange his lips are. Well, I've had the bite midway through cooking a bacon sandwich. I thought I turned it off when I had the bite, but I'd actually turned it up. Let's have a look. Oh. <laughs> How's that for a bacon sandwich? <laughs> Jesus, look at that. My whole bivvy just stinks of burntness. Well, it appears like it is bite time, so I'm just going to stick another uh, boilie hook bait on this one, get the rod back out, get a few more catapults of boilie out there. It looks like uh, I've just seen two show right over the top of the boilie spot as well. So it looks like a few fish are just rocked up so let's get this rod back out and see if we can make the most of this feeding spell by getting another Second fish in quick succession, one mirror, beautiful fish, nice chocolatey, dark, lovely, melted, scaled beast. And this one, beautiful, scale perfect, common. So two bites, two different spots. I'm glad I changed one of the rods last night and put it on just boilie because uh, this boilie muncher has been troughing and uh, it's the second bite of the morning. So I've just topped up with a little bit more bait, a few catapult falls of boilie and uh, fingers crossed. Let's hope for another fish. Just come round to the back of the swim for a little bit of shelter. The wind is hacking in here the last couple of hours. It is blowing a hooli. To be honest, the conditions look really, really good, but someone needs to tell the carp that because they're not really playing ball. Having said that, a few fish have followed the wind on down this morning. And, and um, it's, although there's not as many fish, nowhere near as many fish shown as yesterday, there is the odd one sticking his head out. But I've had a few bites this morning, so that, that's a result. I had a nice, nice one round to the left along the reed line margin this morning. Nice, uh, real nice scaly one, followed by a common off the boily spot. And I've just had another one, little common round to the left again, out of that little bay. And um, he certainly didn't want his photo taken. He was angry, he was off. Did you get it? Um, only a small one, but it's a bite. To be honest, the fishing's been a bit tough. There's not a lot coming out anywhere on the lake. And although I'm fishing on the lake with a lot of fish in, and it would be lovely to have a big hit of fish, but sometimes it's just not on the cards. And at the moment, it is tricky. Free fish this morning is actually a result for how hard it's fishing. And when it's like this, it's slightly different. You're just trying to pick, nick a bite here and there, you know, and trying to piece something together. So I feel like free fish this morning's a result. If I keep ticking away, it'll be nice to trickle over with a few more fish, see if I can get a bigger one, that's, that's the aim. So I'm just prepping a couple of fresh rigs just for the night ahead and uh, I thought I'd just show you what I've been using. So 
For the left hand two rods, I'm just using my standard Ronnie rig. I've spoke about that so many times in all my videos, so we're not gonna go into that too much. Um, for the ones over the particles in the sweet corn and the boily mix, I've got quite a short link and I'm using my ever faithful yellow Northern special pop-up. When you put in quite a bit of corn in the mix, I think a yellow pop-up over the top is just what's needed to get the bite. Over the boilie rig, slightly different. So because I'm boilie fishing, just catapulting out baits, I'm fishing a lot longer rig. So it's two or three inches longer because I think that the fish are just dipping down, picking up one bait at a time. So that, that longer rig just allows them to suck the hook bait in and then move before, oh, and we got a bite. Here we go. Come on, let's have a go. She's in, big shoulders on it. So before I got interrupted with that fish, I was just, just saying that I use a longer boom section for when I'm boily fishing. Um, and then hook bait wise, I've gone for just a straight match the hatch 15 mil pro stim liver pop up. I like to sort of uh, use the same sort of bait that I'm putting out when I'm boily fishing because there's so much boilies going out and they're all pretty much the same apart from the 10 millers and the 15s. So I've gone for a match the hatch, but on this occasion it's it's because it's a pop-up and with the little bit of putty that i've got on the rig it just slowly sinks down so when the fish are just sort of mooching along between the baits it just sucks this one up a little bit easier rig wise is the same ronnie rig i use for most of my fishing but i've just got a slightly bigger hook on shoulders on him. <laughs> that left hand spot is starting to rock now with that wind pushing in there. They're getting a bit bigger, big scaly one. And um, yeah, big variety of fish in here. They've all been sort of like almost a different strain almost. And uh, this one's got a massive hump on his shoulders. This is gonna go on to uh, bigger and better things, I'm sure. So bait wise this session, I'm fishing three different spots, but the bay rod round to the left and my middle rod are fishing over the same mix mixture of bait. And that's just one of my sort of go-to mixes for day ticket waters. It works absolutely everywhere I go. And that's uh, boily, sweet corn and hemp. Um, for today, I've got the new bait, which is the Pro Stim liver. And I'm mixing it up with, eight, with 15 millers and with 10 millers. And they're such a lovely, soft, digestible bait. I'm just crushing a few up in my hands and just splitting them up so that I've got get a lot of like leak out of flavor into the swim. The spot round to the left in the reeds is a little bit shallower. And when it's shallower water, I tend to put less bait in. So I'm baiting quite lightly on that spot and that's done quite a lot of bites. The spot that I've been baiting more heavier with this mix, it took a little bit longer to get going, 24 hours before I started catching off of it, but I've had a few off of it now. And on the right hand spot, I've literally just been putting just straight boilie out and I'm popping a marker float out. It's only eight wraps out or eight, I'm wading out and then casting eight wraps. So I'm just wading out, popping a marker float up and just scattering 15 millers over the top and then a few 10 millers after. And, and that's been quite good to be fair. That's done me quite a few bites and I'm really hoping that's gonna do a bigger fish as well. So when it comes to knocking the bait up, I always put the boilie in first. So I like to use the mixture of 15 millers and 10 millers, and then I'll just crush a load up as well. What that gives you is you've got baits that are crushed up, you've got whole baits, you've got different sizes. So the, it just increases the interaction in the swim and just gives you a better leak off. Another thing that I do to increase that attraction in leak off is I'll add the matching liquid. So the Pro Stim liver liquid, once I've put the boilies in, I just give it a light glaze, shake it all around, and that absorbs into all the crushed boilies, into the whole boilies, and that just increases the leak off and attraction. Next, 
I'll, I'll add a couple of tins of sweet corn and then I'll just top it off by pouring a bit of hemp in and then just mixing it up. And all again, all those juices out of the sweet corn in the hemp just adds to the mix, adds to the leak off and that adds to the attraction in the swim to hopefully draw the fish in and get them feeding. Well, after a really slow start to the trip, I didn't see today coming from, so my first bite didn't come till nine o'clock this morning, and now I've had 10 fish, 11 bites landed 10. So we're just coming into the evening now, and it has been a pretty hectic day. The wind has been absolutely ripping through the swim, it's pumping in here, and that seems to have brought a few fish in. Oh, just had a bleep on that one. I think that was the wind. Um, it's made filming quite difficult because of the audio. The wind's just been so noisy, like on the microphones and that. But I've just plugged away, kept ticking along. I've caught fish on all three rods now on three different spots. Um, the the left-hand rod round the corner has been the most consistent. Uh, then the boily rod started chucking up a few bites. Um, and notably, the, the spot that I thought was going to be the banker in eight foot of water with the particles on, hadn't done a bite and I was just contemplating putting two rods on the boily spot and I just tied up a rig and then finally, 24 hours later into the session, the particle spot went and then I had another bite not long after as well. So it's unusual for me to fish three different spots, but I just feel like I've got so many options in this swim that I just had to spread the rods about in the end. You know, there was quite a lot of fish to the left of the swim yesterday and then so many show to the right i just had to put a rod over there and I've, I've caught in a mixture of tactics as well so lightly baiting around the corner which is like a rod length off the far margin um, steady baiting with particles and a bit of boily on the middle rod and then the right hander is just straight boily just just catapulting out quite a bit in the evening and then um, after every bite i was just a few pouchfuls over the top now it's come to evening, I've redone all the rods, I've topped up the three different spots and fingers crossed for a bite at night. But if last night's anything to go by, the fish sort of pushed out. And let's just hope if that does happen, that they'll come back in on the wind tomorrow. In terms of the fish I've been catching, well, Christ, I've had a right old mixed bag. I've had linears, I've had really dark mirrors, I've had scattered linears, scaly ones, perfect commons. I've had one with a big hump and I've even had two fish at once on the mat. Um, so it's been a right old mixture. The only thing I think I'm missing is a proper big in. So fingers crossed for tonight and uh, the next 24 hours. Well, as expected, I've had a very quiet night, no indications at all. The fish drifted out as they did the, the previous evening and um, they've not come back. So it's eight o'clock now. They rocked up at nine o'clock yesterday morning. So I'm really hoping for a repeat performance of that. Um, there's a lot of fish showing long or over the other side, I should say, but they're further up the lake this morning. The wind's just picked up. It's hacking down into this corner now the last half an hour. So fingers crossed a few fish get on it and we can start catching. So I'm going to go get the chest waders ready just in case they rock up. So I've just had a bite on the left hander and just got a fish in the net down to the left and uh, topped up that spot, got the rod back out and I just thought the, the other rod over the particles hadn't gone for a little while so 
I thought I'd just put three spots over the top just to freshen it up, get a bit more attraction in the swim. Literally five to 10 minutes after spotting and uh, the rod's ripped off and we've got another fish on. So uh, once you get them going, the bites are starting to come thick and fast. Wow, what a palaver. The fish weeded me up solid and uh, I needed a bit of help from the cameraman. So there's no footage of me landing this one, but thanks to Brad, we bit of teamwork, we managed to get it into the net. So um, yeah, that seems like a pretty fitting way to end the trip. Got a couple of fish here. Let's get them out, have a look at them and get packed up and get home, I guess. Yeah, it's big fat linear. Well, what a perfect way to end the trip. I just love those big scaly linears and uh, look at the size of the scales on it. Lovely, lovely fish. Really pleased to have caught that one and it's the perfect way to end the trip. The one before it was lovely as well. That was a completely different strain of carp, a real dark sort of chestnut scaly fish. You know, what dreams are made of. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Really enjoyed the session. I've caught quite a lot of fish, had lots of bites. I've had to work really hard for it and I've had to change the spots. You know, I fish three different spots and I've caught from them all, different tactics as well. But it's just been a really nice trip. You know, just working hard, getting bites, catching lovely scaly fish like this one. Did you get it? I got it. Yes. <laughs>